purpose on this Defending Sacred Places advocacy delegation is really threefold. First, we're here to learn. We're being entrusted with this information so that we can return to our communities and our networks as knowledge ambassadors, raising awareness about the impacts of our collective consumption choices on the sacred places to these communities and on the land that we share here in the United States. In Northern Nevada, we met with Carrie Dan, a longtime land rights activist and Western Shoshone elder, who showed us the devastating impact of gold mining on Holy Mount Dinabo, which is home to local Shoshone creation stories, and which is now the site of one of the largest open pit cyanide heap leach gold mines in the United States. I think just coming out here and showing your support, first of all, does something because it gives people hope. It lets people know that other people are watching and that other people care. And that, that really, it really means something. I've cared about this mountain for some time now, and I've been following the story, not showing up but it was time to show up. I want to remember those sen the sense memories of being here, and I want to take those back with me and be able to find a new way to communicate this to people, and I don't think I can do that without coming. I do really believe they got an underground tunnel right there where all these trucks are going. Doesn't it look awful? We're also here with the goal of mutual empowerment, that by coming together as women, as allies, as people who care so deeply and so passionately about this earth and about her people and about the preservation of sacred places for their own sake, that we can become stronger. In Northern Arizona, we are meeting with the Save the Peaks Coalition. And Janita Benali and her family and colleagues are working to protect the sacred San Francisco peaks from desecration by the use of sewer water to create artificial snow. What happens to her will affect us. It will affect us in a way that is mental, spiritual, physical, and emotional because that is our direct connection with, with our holy mountain. We're not give up yeah. while we're still here. Yeah. If you want to help us, it's good, yeah. We need help. We're also visiting the Havasupai tribe, whose village at the bottom of the Grand Canyon is being threatened by uranium mining at the rim of the canyon. The sacred mountain to the Havasupai, called Red Butte, is located just three miles away from a proposed uranium mine. 
Red Butte is where the Havasupai perform their ceremonies and go for spiritual healing and renewal. Those of you that haven't met Carletta Toulouse, you're in for a treat. She's this an incredibly powerful, relatively young leader uh, with Havasupai. This is the future, uh, you know, in, in, in Native nations. Right now, the, the strongest messenger is the indigenous female voice. We're not just concerned about the sacred mountain, uh, we're very concerned about the contamination of the water source. So we're talking about a huge contamination of lots of people. I think that's what's the most frightening thing. And finally, we're here in preparation for action. Our work is really responding to a call for support in the realm of advocacy. And these advocacy delegations are a core component of the advocacy network. When women travel to these sacred lands where the holiest of places are being threatened by development, by extractive industry, they see and they become prepared to share with their communities what's happening, and they become prepared to act and to step forward as leaders to preserve the earth and to promote human rights in indigenous communities. Oftentimes when you think of the Native Americans, we think that it's a closed book that all the damage that could ever be done has already been done, that there's nothing really more that we could do to help. And in fact, that's not true. It's these people are fighting every day and they need allies. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for your interest in this really important issue. Our team is investigating the question how can we advance our system of laws and policies and business practices to protect the sacred, to build a system that acknowledges human relationship to a living earth and which holds the sacred in the highest regard? We rely on, I call them our lifelines, and I would consider Women's Earth Alliance as one of those lifelines. What was it somebody told me the Dalai Lama said the other day? Women are going to save the world? Well, cool. You know, it's, that's, I, I think he's right. If people are feeling like there's no hope, they feel like they can't get there from here, they feel like they're not going to make a difference, what I learned this week is absolutely we're going to make a difference. And so don't feel like you can't make a difference, because you can. You are needed at this time. You are welcome and wanted by the Earth herself to participate in this extraordinary work. My hope for the future is that our great-grandchildren can live in balance and respect with our Mother Earth. <laughs>